Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a video on something that everybody has, not everybody, I've gotten a lot of requests for, uh, for my carnivorous plant collection. And uh, I've been avoiding that one because carnivorous plants don't seem to grow very well for me, uh, except for a couple. And uh, one is my Nepenthes uh, Ventricosa. Uh, it's doing really, really well, and I don't know why it's doing so well. Don't ask me. It's got all kinds of beautiful pictures. It did beautifully this summer. It was covered in spider webs and all that jazz. Um, I don't know whether spider webs are good, but it's not bad. Uh, I need to go through and, and remove the old, drying, yucky pictures. But it has a lot of beautiful pictures, and at one point it had a really good size one. Ah, right here. I don't even know. There. Can you see? Can you see this one? That's a really good size one. That's one of the biggest ones I've had so far. Ah, and there's another one. Another really good size one. There, there, as, as the plant grows, it gets bigger. Um, and uh, normally you want to water these with uh, distilled water or rain water. And I've had this hanging outside all summer long. And uh, it's been getting pretty well full sun. It gets shade during the afternoon. And uh, you want to keep them constantly moist. But unfortunately, I am lazy and uh, I'll remember to water it for like a week or two. And then I'll go and I'll be like, holy goodness, look at how dry you are. And, uh, and then I would water it with the hose. Not rainwater, not distilled water, but with the hose. And my water has a parts per million of about 180 parts per million. And really you should want something that's 160 or less. Um, basically you don't want any chemicals uh, in, the, uh, in the soil or the media. Um... I don't know what to say. Anyway, uh, again, best of water with distilled and rain, but this one seems to be doing well no matter what I do, and I don't really treat it all that well. So there's that one. It's I think it's Ventricosa. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of people are very on the fence about that one. And then I have my Butterworts. Let me just move the camera down and we'll look at the Butterworts. And uh, that's my collection. I used to have a Drosera uh, Capensis, but I ended up getting rid of that because I, I uh, it dried out a lot, and it really wasn't looking good, and I don't know, it wasn't terribly pretty, and, and I oh, I was lazy, and it just it wasn't looking its best, but it would always try to come back, but then I... It was it was me. It's me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's just go down here, and I'll show you these... Uh, um, Pinguiculas or the butterworts, and uh, they really grow well for me. And they're like little weeds, and they do uh, catch the fungus gnats really, really well. And I do recommend every plant grower that grows indoors that has a problem with fungus gnats to try growing the Pinguicula morinensis, the uh, Mexican butterwort. It's the one that doesn't require. Uh, a real dormancy period. It requires a dry period, but not a cold period. Uh, so it's really easy to grow indoors. So I'll, again, I'll move you down. We'll look at it. The ones in flower. I also have a Pinguicula Giganti that I got from a fellow YouTuber. Happy buddy person. Uh, it's still growing and it's finally starting to grow. It's starting to get bigger. So anyway, again, down here. Okay, so here is the Pinguicula Mornensis. Look at that flower. It's beautiful. It reminds me of a viola, a little violet. And uh, this one here, it's got all kinds of uh, old flower spikes. I need to, to remove those. But the problem with pinguiculas is they have a really shallow root system. So if you try to pull these things out, chances are you'll pull the plant right out of the ground. And that's not cool. Um, I, I did a division video not long ago. And uh, these are the divisions of that plant. And uh, they're still alive. I gave uh, two pots of them to uh, Ilona. So Ilona, if you want to uh, post on Facebook what your uh, 
what your plants are looking like today. Uh, you said that you don't have a lot of luck with Pinguicula, so maybe they look like hell. But they can't look any, any worse than this one. Uh, this one looks pretty terrible. Again, I, I like to water with a uh, the zero water. It's a water filter um, that takes out all of the uh, the chemicals and whatnot, and it, and it reads uh, zero parts per million. And uh, they really like that. But the problem is, it comes from the fridge, and uh, I don't want to water my plants with ice cold water. So it's a process to water these things. Uh, so I tend to forget. But then when I do, I, I fill the the reservoir up, and and they're good for a week or two. So look at, this is the Pinguicula Gigante. This one is supposed to, in time, get to be about the size of a dinner plate. So it's still kind of small. But look at, look at all of the, um, the fungus gnats that are, that are stuck to that. Look at, look at how well that is doing its job. It is amazing. It's, uh, it looks very similar to the Morinensis, but uh, a little bit of difference. But I really enjoy it. So I just wanted to share with you the collection that I have. I wouldn't necessarily call it a collection. I have three different varieties, but uh, still, it's impressive. I would like to get a couple more types of Nepenthes, um, maybe some more um, Duro Durosia? Drosera. There we go. Some more Droseras, but uh, the time will tell. I, I will try growing from seed again. My grow space is very, very full, and these really do the trick for the fungus gnats, and these are what I really want to have. Uh, the other ones are a little bit more work, and they they uh, they tend to um, uh, be more resentful if you don't water them with the correct type of water. These ones are a little bit more forgiving, and that's what I need. When I've got a room full of orchids and other plants, I'm not thinking about uh, what has fertilizer in it and what doesn't have fertilizer in it. I just kind of spray everything, and 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 whatever survives survives. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update. I know that it's a little. Uh, a little less than maybe what you thought it was going to be, but that, that's what I got at the moment. And uh, so anyway, join my Plants and Things What's Growing page if you haven't already. Also the Plants and Things regular Facebook page. And uh, leave me a comment there if you'd like. Uh, I do my best to, uh, to comment back to everybody. However, it usually takes me about a week because uh, I do have a full-time job. But uh, anyway... Happy growing, everyone. Show me what you're growing for carnivorous plants. Some of them are absolutely beautiful, and uh, I don't know how you guys keep them alive. I have such a hard time, but I can't be good at everything. Uh, everybody has their niche, right? So anyway, until next time, everyone. But anyway, uh, I have a flower. Do you see it there? Is it going to come into focus? I don't know. But also, uh, we have uh, some little babies here that are going to try to flower. They've actually started to produce 